just now Ricky has explained the basic replication architecture. He explained like what are the basic components that are present within MySQL replication. So how exactly replication happens. So uh, I will directly jump into uh, the latest replication enhancements that are in MySQL. So before that, uh, this is the safe harbor statement. Let's have a look at it. So. First, I will see. Uh, I'll just explain what are the major features that went in MySQL 5.7 release, and uh, briefly explain about each of the features and their importance. And then we will have a look at the current development milestone releases, like what are the important features that went in. We'll briefly discuss about each of them. And then what is the next roadmap that we have for MySQL replication? So. First, we'll discuss about online reconfiguration of global transaction. So everybody use a term called GTID. What is GTID? If we see the MySQL traditional replication, all the updates that are happening on the master are written into a log called binary log in the form of events. So if we have to locate a particular transaction, we need to go through the fi file and then we need to identify the starting position of it and end position. So it becomes cumbersome. So what we have done is, we try to group the set of events as in when a transaction commits in the EOD region, we have given a logical number with the transaction that is called as GKID. So uh, what is the use of this global transaction identifier? So uh, Ricky already explained that it provides a seamless failover mechanism. So whenever there is a failure, we want to make sure that there is very much uh, less downtime and uh, we can do it with less amount I mean, uh, we don't want users to look into the binary logs and go to the file name and position. So it should happen automatically. So this GTID is help for the procedure. So for example, we have one master and there are two slaves that are getting replicated from this master. In the event of a failure, these GTIDs help uh, us to identify which is the slave which is which has the latest transactions, which has more number of GTIDs updated today. So you choose the server which has more number of GTIDs being executed on it and you promote it as a master. And during the failover also, the slave, uh, when it connects to the new master, all it has to say is, make use of the GKD auto position protocol. So once you say that auto position equal to one, so it takes care of sending what are the transactions that I have on the slave, and then it sends that to the master. So master says, okay, slave has these many, these many transactions, such and such, whatever is missing, and the rest of it. So the failover have mechanism has become very simple with the introduction of GKDs. So this feature was introduced in 5.6.6 and then uh, when it was initially introduced, so how it was you know, uh, it required that all the servers to be synced up and then you have to bring down all the servers and then enable GTID mode on all the servers and then bring them up once. So this requires lot of downtime. So in production you really can't do that way. So what we tried is we wanted users to do it in an online fashion. So how we can do it? So when we are configuring this GTID is online, so we can have reads and writes in progress, no need for us to synchronize all the servers, and no need to restart them, it works, and if there is any problem during the application process, we can leave the process there, and we can go back and fix the error, and then we can start the application. So, how exactly we do this? When the servers are up and running, how do you turn on the GTID is online? So, we do it in a step-by-step -step process, if we see uh, uh, earlier, GKD mode has only two possible cases. Either you have GKD mode on or you have GKD mode off. So when you say on, all the transactions should have a GKD associated. If you say off, none of the transactions should have any GKD associated. So how do you switch from one stage to the other stage? We cannot do a direct switch. So we do it in a step-by-step -step uh, fashion. So first, what we have to do is on all the servers, we set the GTID mode is equal to half one message. So in this stage, we are letting every server know that, OK, we are in anonymous transaction mode. We don't have any GTIDs with it. And we are doing it in a step-by-step -step process. So we are able to accept GTID-based transactions. But all the new transactions that are originating on this server will not have any GTID associated. So we slowly make them used to this GTID. And then the second step is, on all the servers, you said GTID mode is equal to on position. So with this step, whatever the transaction that is originating on the server will be associated with the GTID. 
but still we will be able to consume the anonymous transaction services. So we are in an intermediate stage. Uh, it can be uh, like some are anonymous, some are GTDs, but the server won't complain at this stage. So it will be able to consume. Once this setup is done, you wait for a uh, replication latter. Assume that you have executed this particular transaction now. You wait for this to be replicated on all the servers and you wait for it to be consumed. Once it is done, we just set GTID mode equal to on on all the servers. So now we have enabled GTIDs on all the servers. So there are very nice blocks written by our developers which explain why we have to do this in step by step uh, way. So you can refer to the blocks as well. You can also refer to the reference manual for more information. How do we do three? How do we wait? Uh, basically, for example, you have done this GTD mode equal to on the master. You get the show master status. You execute on it. You identify at what is the transaction uh, file name and position where I have executed this. Basically, on all the slaves or in the setup, you wait for uh, all the binary logs to be consumed at this till this position file name. Assume that you have executed this step on bin log file 1 at 1000th position. Okay? So you wait on all the servers, you check that you have consumed till this. So that's a manual process? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Next comes locking based parallelism. So what is this parallelism? So if you see on master, there can be several clients that are connected to master and they can be executed, transactions can be executed parallelly on the master. But when it gets replicated to slave, on the slave side, traditionally we had only one receiver thread and one applier thread. So all the parallelism that was there on the master was getting lost on the slave. So the slave was lagging. What we have done is in our initial uh, versions of MySQL, we have introduced parallelism based on the databases. If two transactions belong to two different databases, then they can be scheduled parallelly on the same. But it requires that your data to be spread across various databases. That limitation was there. So only transactions that belong to different databases can be scheduled parallelly. But still we were not achieving a higher throughput. So we have come up with locking based parallelism. So with that, if we see, what we have done is we have done a simple experiment where we have simulated X amount of load on master and then we have taken the time it, uh, to, to apply those transactions and we, when the same data was replicated to slave with the locking based parallelism, we were able to see that the slave applier thread has performed drastically, its throughput has gone up. So earlier the single threaded slave applier was very slow with 8 threads. It is able to apply faster than the master. Like as and when the threads are increasing, the applier is able to cope up with the master. It's getting the same performance as that of master. So the, now the slaves are faster and they are not lagging behind the master. So how exactly this locking based parallel is? <coughs> so what happens at master is, uh, assume that there are two transactions which are entering the commit stage at same amount of time. So if two transactions are in the transaction T1, it enters the commit phase at the first line and transaction 2 has started its commit during step 2. But they have not completed the commit process. So when two transactions are uh, simultaneously at the commit stage, that means they don't have conflicting locks. They have independent locks. So such transactions which have independent locks uh, are grouped together in the binary log and they are associated with some ID, some information. So this information is sent along with the binary log to the slave and slave when it sees this group it thinks that they can be scheduled parallelly, they don't have any conflicting logs and it will be applied on the slave parallelly. So we make use of this locking based parallelism, parallelism <coughs> to achieve higher control. Next comes Multi-source replication, uh, uh, we already uh, came to know about the architecture, how the multi-source replication looks like. So we have one slave which can replicate from multiple masters. So the best use cases are you can use it for integrated backups and you can do your analytic related work on the integrated slave, uh, on the slave. So it acts as a data hub as well. And 
uh, this multi-threaded slave is integrated completely with multi-threaded slaves and global transaction identifiers and crash safe slaves. So when I say it is integrated with multi-threaded slave, let us see how it looks. So this is how, uh, let's have a scenario, there are three masters and they both are, uh, all, all three of them have only one slave. So uh, for each replication connection between master and slave, we have a separate sender thread and we have a separate receiver thread and separate uplayer thread. So all the combination of sender, receiver and uplayer threads, we call it as a channel and each channel can be independently configured. Assume that master one, you want only two uplayer threads to be configured. You can say that I want, for the first channel, I want only two uplayer threads. For the second channel, if you want four uplayers, we can configure. So that way, we can individually uh, monitor and change each of the channels. So we can control each of the channels independently. And all the information about these multi-source replication, uplayers, workers, all are available. So, uh, for each connector, uh, coordinator related information is available in coordinator performance schema. For each channel specific worker information is available in a player status by worker table. And for each channel, uh, the receiver thread information is available in the connection status table. So, when it comes to the number of sources from that we can replicate, actually there is no limit. But still we have put a cap of 256 and uh, each source can be configured. So those are the main features that I wanted to discuss in GA release. So now we'll have a brief look at the current DMR or the uh, sorry the development release. So what are the enhancements that we have done? So if we see that MySQL replication has three different formats of replication. One is the statement based, and the other one is row based, and the other one is mixed format. So when we are using the row based replication. Earlier, there was no way for us to know like how far my row-based replication event has been updated. For example, you have for insert we have write rows, and for updates we have update event, and for delete we have delete event. So when there is a bulk insert or update going on, we don't know how far the insert or have or the update has progressed. So now we provide the information through a performance schema table that is even stages current. I mean, uh, earlier Mike explained. So if we query the table, it shows that, for example, uh, this is a bulk insert scenario. So there are 200 inserts that have been happening. But at present, it has applied 98 transactions. 98 uh, rows have been applied. And still, we have to apply the remaining set of rows. So that is a, a very good improvement uh, with respect to getting to know about the state of row-based replication. And, uh, the last one is like setting the GKID purge variable. So what is GKID purge variable? So as and when, see, uh, all the updates that are happening on the master are written to the binary log. So we cannot always keep all the binary logs. So it will consume more space. So what happens is we will be purging them from time to time. So when the binary logs are purged, the set of GKIDs that are present in the binary log are stored in a variable called GKID purge variable. So if we have to set this variable, earlier there was a limitation saying the GKD executed should be empty. That is, if you have to set a GKD purged variable, you can do it only on a fresh server. If the server has, I mean, already is up and running, you cannot set this GKD variable. So what is the basic use case of it? For example, you want to take a backup and you want to restore it on a server which is up and running. Earlier, that was not possible, but with this GTID purge variable, uh, online syllable, we are able to do that. Okay, so how do we set this GTID purge variable? We can set it as different different sets, uh, or we can set it as with single assignment also. So I will show an example like how do you set it. So for example, let us take two servers. So both are up and running, both have GTID is enabled. What we do is, we are taking a backup on the first master. When we take the backup, so the backup contains all the required data. And uh, since we have a copy of the data, we don't require the GTID specific information. So we know what are the set of GTIDs that were present in the data. We make a mark of the set of GTIDs uh, that have been purged or the executed, and we store it along with our backup. 
when we apply, restore the backup on server 2, which is up and running, what we do is the previously executed GTDs will become the set of GTDs that we have So, you can do this now even when the server 2 is up and running or it has GTDs available. Earlier, the server 2 should be a fresh, fresh save. So, that is the advantage of that. So, for example, how we can set it? Uh, if we do a select of this GTD purge variable, it is empty. So, we can say with plus syntax, where you say that uh, set GTD purge is equal to transaction 1, and then we can do a select on it, and we can add another set to it, saying that 1 to 10, we can do a select, that's how all the GTDs are grouped. So, what is next with respect to MySQL replication? We are uh, trying to improve, I mean, we are planning to integrate more replication specific data into data dictionaries, and we are trying to make it more usable for users, and uh, we are trying to provide inst more instrumented information performance schema tables, and uh, uh, make the administrative commands simpler, and uh, uh, we are still working our best to improve the multi-threaded slaves, apply performance improvement, and uh, that's all. So, there to go. Mm -hmm. We would request everybody to download our latest packages from devs.mysql.com and try out our latest lab, lab releases as well. And please refer to the MySQL documentation for additional information. We always have mysql-highvalibility.com where all the blogs of MySQL application are available. So, any questions? Uh, is there anything like a channel based replication because like MariaDB you are going to add in your yeah. roadmap? Yeah, at present we have the filter <coughs> being implemented at global level yeah, and uh, global it will level. be, we, we are working on personal specific filters that will be released. And also the yes. replicate rewrite DB, that will be also helpful when we are using multi source replication because in some scenarios, uh, for example, in my case, we are having a we are having a database for different countries. The database name is same, but when we are replicating in multi in MySQL we cannot do it. So in that case, we are using MySQL for that reason. It will be very soon available. We are working on the first specific filters. And also regarding the GTL slide, yes, set GTL for Python and that slide. The exam. Next. So okay. Next one. Uh, this one I cannot understand. The GTD first value which you are setting that should be the U UUID of that server, right? That cannot be yes, a user specific one. I mean, it's just for an example they have chosen it that way. Like how do you? It's a UUID. Yeah, yeah it should be UUID. Yeah, so it is UUID. Yeah, it's just for example. Sorry. Yeah. It should be the server you like. For channel replication filters, we are working on it. Uh, I, I think we discussed some time about rewrite DB on the slave. You can use a different database. Yeah, so I would like, after the presentation, I would like to hear for what purpose you are using MariaDB that cannot be be that is the use case I told you. Right? We, are, we are having a, we are, we are hosted the same product on different countries, but the database name is same. For example, the database name is A and Thailand, it's same for Philippines, the database name is A. When we are doing multi-source and MySQL, how can you do it? Because we should be fine, right? From this channel, you do a real only yeah. country wants to rewrite the DB? Yeah. Because I am in six countries, it's not channel based. Right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Once yeah. a channel based, yeah. it is it is possible. Multi sources. Yeah. He is using multi source replication from five different databases. <coughs> and every database, the database name is same. Yeah. So while syncing on a centralized repository, yeah. they have a uh, same name, so there will be a font. How you can do this? Okay? Yeah. Per channel, after yeah. per channel, per channel, this yeah, we are working on it. Mm -hmm. So, that's a question, right? So, MariaDB is a fork of MySQL, so how does it work? It's going two different ways? 
MariaDB is a fork of MySQL. So how how does the code work? It's going to no, it has a it or? has a contribution from the community. So they have more added features. They will. They have their own separate repository. Means uh, yeah. actually, it's started from the main master from MySQL, but now they have their separate repository and they are maintaining it. We have different set of features. Like MySQL is the parent, and they have a separate child. Means Perpona is one, MariaDB is one. So I mean, is it to be going this way like this? Yeah. 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 And there are certain databases which is actually a proprietary, like the AWS release uh, some time back Aurora. Which is not open source, but derived from the MySQL. Yeah. So MariaDB is forked from MySQL 5.5. So Fire 5 MariaDB is forked, and now MySQL 5.6 has a 7, and now we are going to have 5.8. Do does MariaDB look at all the new code changes in MySQL? Please, can I say that? MariaDB can answer that. Do you look at the changes in MariaDB? No. Actually, the, 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 way, the way I heard it, uh, MariaDB, MariaDB keep on. Uh, Become more diverse. It's a divergence of their yeah, uh, from other uh, MySQL also. Yeah, they have changed the GTM concept, which we are using in MySQL and MariaDB is totally different. Yeah, right. Yeah. So there are a lot of different. There are lots of MySQL. Yeah, so something which you find in my MySQL, you cannot find it in MariaDB. Vice versa, you cannot. I think the simpler things is still the same, but yeah, the basic things are changed. Yeah. There are a couple of differences actually. Yeah. It means they are now they are move away from the 5.5 as he mentioned. Yeah. They move away from 5.5 and they are maintaining their own source code. Mm -hmm. But the files are they compatible? Not really. Mm -hmm. So the, the one written by one cannot be read by the other. It means if they have some new functionality and then you cannot use it in the previous version of uh, any other database. Okay. So uh, any other questions before we we add this thing. Last call for questions. Come on. Okay. Yeah.